everyone, welcome back. All the possible questions related to business transaction analysis is explained in these tutorials. In the first tutorial, we'll look at a few simple business transactions in a startup business. In the second tutorial, we will look at more common trade transactions. That means those are related to buying and selling goods or services. In the transaction analysis, you know the steps to follow. Starting with reading the transaction to verify whether it is a business transaction, then applying the duality principles, followed by determining whether it has an increasing or decreasing effect, and finally ensuring the left hand side of the equation is equal to the right hand side of the equation. If you want a detailed explanation, have a look at the tutorial accounting equation part 2. Let's continue with the transaction analysis. We have already discussed six examples in the previous tutorial. So let's move to the illustrative example number 7. Inventory purchases in cash paid $5,000. Inventory is an asset, normally falls under the current asset category. So it has both increasing and decreasing effects in assets. Inventory increases and cash asset decreases as the entity pays cash to purchase these inventory stocks. So the accounting equation would record increase inventory by 5000 and decrease cash asset by 5000. This is a one sided, only affecting the asset side of the equation, but still the accounting equation balances. Asset goes up and goes down by the same amount. The accounting equation and worksheets will only be useful for those small entities who do not maintain journals and ledger accounts. But if you know journal entries, you might be a little confused with this recording. Because the inventory purchases we record in purchases journal. We don't have a separate journal for inventories. But accountants do measure inventories separately, we call it as inventory valuation. You might have heard these terms before, FIFO, LIFO, weighted average cost methods, that is how to arrive at closing inventories and cost of sales. Don't worry, I'll be talking about everything in my upcoming tutorials. Okay, let's look at if the inventory purchased on credit. Asset goes up by the amount of purchased inventories, but instead of cash payment, this develops a liability. Receiving goods without making an upfront payment is called receiving a trade credit. Now the business is having an obligation to pay to its suppliers within the payment terms. Say for instance, Suppliers may offer 30 days payment terms, so it is an obligation to make the payment within that stipulated time period. So we would record inventory increase by 5000 and accounts payable liability increase by 5000. Account payables or creditors are interchangeably used, but we often see the word accounts payable on corporate balance sheets. So we'll stick to that term. The next transaction is AC. When business pays to suppliers, cash asset decreases by the payment. And also the liability decreases by the payment amount, which is 4,500 in this example. Let's look at the next example. It is common to return inventories back to the suppliers due to number of reasons. It could be by acquired a large amount of quantities. May, maybe by acquired the wrong goods or the seller sent the wrong goods. Or if they carry any defects, so then the buyer wants to return the items. In this example, 
inventories were purchased on credit and now returning 500 worth of them back to the suppliers. So the impact onto the accounting equation would be decrease in inventory asset and also decrease in accounts payable liability. Since the business returns some of the items, the obligation reduces by that amount. So in this particular example, inventories and accounts payables decrease by 5000. Again, there would be a slight difference when it comes to recording in journals. Where in accounting, we have a separate purchase return journal. So as I explained for purchases journal, we value the inventories separately considering all these transactions. So the purchase returns would record in purchase return journals as there is no separate account for inventories in the ledger. As I said earlier, this accounting equation is the basis for accounting beginners. And in the real practice, we hardly see accounting equation in practice, but still it is useful for those smaller entities who do not maintain journals and ledger accounts. Okay, another question. What if those return of goods purchased in cash? In the accounting equation would record them as decrease in inventory and increases in cash if the suppliers would immediately pay them, pay them back. It could be either immediate cash received from the suppliers or could be received later. Whatsoever, both would recognize under assets. Let's move to expenses. Expenses could be any of this, rent, salaries and wages, utility bills, advertising and marketing, insurance, taxes, depreciation, cost of goods sold or cost of sales. Let's look at how to record paid wages to employees. Amount to 25,000. Since it is a cash payment, cash asset goes down. And on the other hand, expenses resulted in decreasing the equity. If the payment has not been made, we need to record that as a liability because it is an obligation to make the payment. We call it as accrual expenses. We'll look at those advanced transactions in our next tutorial. Depreciation of property, plant and equipment other than land. We are not depreciating land because it has unlimited useful life. So the depreciation is another common expense item we see in the income statement. Depreciation would decrease the asset value. So we can get the carrying value of the asset in the balance sheet. Since it is an expense, we know it decreases the equity. So we can record the transaction as decreases in asset by 5000 and equity decreases by 5000. Moving to the next example, illustrative example number 13 is to record cost of sales. To calculate the gross profit, we need the sales figure and the cost of sales figure. Say for instance, we are dealing with a retail business. They buy inventories at cost and sell them adding a markup or we can say adding a profit percentage. So we need to identify cost of sales. What is the actual amount of inventories sold and the sales revenue separately. In this example, it clearly says that $1,500 worth of inventories are sold at $2,000. So the cost of sales is $1,500 and sales revenue is $2,000 and the difference is the profit of $500. Okay, when inventories are sold, inventory asset 
goes down by 1500 and that is the cost of sales which is an expense so the equity goes down by the same amount in recording transactions in journal and ledger accounts we do not record cost of sales for each sale transactions but instead we can easily derive that from inventory valuation for the period for the financial statements there is an easy formula to do so which is equal to opening inventory plus purchases made during the period minus closing inventory will give you the total of cost of sales for the reporting period. We'll look at these things in detail in our coming tutorials. Okay, so we recorded cost of sales. Now the next, next transaction is to record sales revenue of $2,000. If it is a cash sales, very easy, business received cash, so the cash asset increased and it is an income, income resulted in increase in the equity, so both assets and equity goes up by 2000. If it is a credit sale, it increases accounts receivable, or we could say it has uh, increase in debtors. They are the assets, so increase by 2000. So it is the amount of money owed by customers for purchases made on credit. So they will pay us in the near future. As per the accrual accounting concept, we record the transaction in the period they occur regardless the cash receipt. So the sales will be shown as an income so equity asset equities increase by 2000. All good. Here we go. The customers paid $1,200. It increases the cash asset as the cash receipt of $1,200. But it reduces the amount of accounts receivable because the customers has paid $1,200. This is also a one-sided transaction recorded only in the asset side of the equation. Let's look at sales returns, which is a normal part of business. The customers return goods if they carry defects or if they are not according to the buyer's specifications. In this transaction, Sales was initially made on credit. Customers return $500 worth of credit sales and the cost of sales was $375. Now we need to reverse the original recording. Cost of sales amount should be added back to the inventory stock. So the inventory asset increased by the cost that is $375. The accounts receivable recognized must be reversed by the amount of sales returned. So it decreases by $500. The difference is the loss due to the sales returns. That means originally 375 worth of inventory sold for 500. Now when the transaction is reversed, we need to identify that profit as a loss. Incurring a loss means decrease in the equity by 125. It then balances the accounting equation. What if the sales were made in cash? Then instead of this impact on accounts receivable, a payable must be recognized to acknowledge the liability to reimburse the customer the amount he had paid, which is $500. So we have to recognize that as a liability. A 
again, there would be a slight difference when it comes to recording in journals, where in accounting we have a separate sales return journal. Since we value the inventory separately considering all the transactions, so the sales returns would record in sales return journal, not in inventory in the accounts. I'll touch them in my future tutorials. This accounting equation is only useful, as I said earlier, for those small entities who do not maintain journals and ledger accounts. Moving to the next illustrative example, what if the debtors do not pay back $200 after sending them a number of reminders? Assume they are now bankrupted. In such circumstances, there is no possible way the debt could be collected. So we need to write them off as bad debts. If you see the term irrecoverable debts, that is the same. So our assets decrease by $2,000 as we cannot collect them and record them under assets. On the other hand, bad debt is an expense, so it decreases the equity. So we need to record these amounts in as decrease in assets and decrease in equity. If you have any questions, please feel free to put your comments below. Let's meet again in Accounting Equation Part 4 with advanced examples related to accrual accounting. We touch bits and pieces, but I'll bring you a clear explanation followed by a Q&A. Stay tuned.